Jean Allen. I'd like to tell you something about the Junior Miss pageant that's held every year in Mobile, Alabama. The pageant is a search for the ideal high school senior in the nation. It all started some time ago in Mobile, where a high school queen and her court were selected each year to reign over the famous Azalea Trail Festival. Gradually, the idea of the festival spread throughout the South and then to the entire nation when it became America's Junior Miss pageant. Now, and for the past six years, in many cities all across the country, preliminary Junior Miss contests are held, usually under the sponsorship of local Junior Chambers of Commerce. In these contests, each girl is judged on a number of qualities, appearance, poise, mental and scholastic achievements, talent. The winners of these many preliminary contests then go on to state contests, and the 50 lucky winners of those, each bearing the banner of her home state, go on to the week-long finals of the Junior Miss Pageant in Mobile. Pageant week is a time of color, fun, and excitement. I know because I was there as Rhode Island's Junior Miss. And when it all came down to the final night, 50 girls had 50 hearts beating in double time. Mine certainly was. Here's a part of the television show on the final night of the pageant. The winner is... Rhode Island's doing it. What an unbelievable moment that was. Then followed an unforgettable year as America's Junior Miss. Summertime brought trips and appearances at all kinds of events all across the country. I have a scrapbook full of pictures of the places I saw, the people I met, the things I did. Parents in the pace setting civic development in Rochester, New York, the Midtown Plaza. But we're not here to talk about me. We're here to show you the 1963 pageant from beginning to end. The fun, the thrills, the excitement. The day was March 9th, a pleasant, warm southern day as the first plane arrived. It seemed as if everyone in Mobile had turned out to give the visitors a big, hospitable welcome. The Azalea Queen and her court. Bands, photographers, the press and radio. Everyone was there to say hello. And of course, wherever there are good-looking girls, there are sure to be boys like this lucky one who has Colorado's junior miss, Janice Baker. For each of these girls who are arriving, it was the start of the week to which they had been pointing for ever so many months. As we said, each one of these girls is twice a winner. Once in her home city, the second and more difficult time in her home state. And now, one of these girls will be a winner for the third and biggest time of all. Who will it be? Alaska's Terry O'Neill or Idaho's Diana McDaniel? Maybe Arizona's junior miss, Roxanne Hooper. Or perhaps Kentucky's lovely Diane Sawyer. Would it be Nevada's vivacious Sheila Ann Kenworthy? 
We don't know who it would be. There are 50 to choose from, and they're all handsome. I, too, was invited to Mobile to complete my term and to pass the crown on to the new America's junior miss, whoever she might be. But now, let's follow some of the girls. Hello. How are you? Hi. We've been looking forward to meeting you girls. How was your trip? It was wonderful. It was my first flight. It was really terrific. It was a marvelous time. I came in, it was dark, but it, the flight was marvelous. Well, I'm so glad. Oh, you had a wonderful time. Shall we go in? Oh, fine. Oh. Hi, Susan. Yeah, Hi, Mo. Welcome to Mo Beach. Thank you. We're so delighted to be here. Everything's just wonderful. The reception is just fabulous. Did you meet your roommate on the plane? Yes, and Yes, and we played a game trying to remember uh, each name of the girls from each stage. Finally, come on. Well, girls, come on in this week. Thank you, sir. Thank you. During pageant week, Mobile citizens open their homes to the contestants. The girls are all house guests in the homes of these fine people and find that the easy and formal atmosphere is one of the most delightful parts of the whole pageant experience. Sunday is church day. In the morning, each girl attends the service of her choice. After church is a time for pictures. Each girl had been given a camera and film so that she could make a picture record of the noble moments in Mobile. One of the most memorable was the trip to the magnificent Bellingrath Gardens, a famous sightseeing spot for all exquisite, and with the girls in their Sunday best, made ideal subjects for colored pictures. For a bonus, the Azalea Court was there in costume to complement the spectacular floral display. But now it's Monday, and the big week gets off to a rousing start with a parade. Eleanor War, the junior miss from the home state of Alabama, gets a big hand as she leads off. Arizona stately Roxanne Hooper. Kentucky's Diane Sawyer had a touch of a cold, but happily it went away. Mississippi's Cherry Scale. Isn't she darling? Aha, Ohio's Pam Robinson is on the air. <laughs> Linda Beaupre, who captivated everyone with her natural charm. And Wisconsin's pixie, Susan Brecker. The parade the excitement, the knowledge that this was the big one, set every girl's heart beating just a little bit faster. I guess I was about the only one in the parade who could relax. The first rung up the ladder is a conference with the judges. Balancing an umbrella is a good way to calm nerves while waiting. Girls are rated on personality, character, general demeanor. Let's eavesdrop. Hello, Linda. Hello, How Linda. are you today? Fine, thank you. Have you had a busy morning? Oh, you bet I have. <laughs> did you rehearse this morning? Yes, we did. We rehearsed our, um, our talent, and then we rehearsed a little bit after that. We rehearsed our formal for a while. Uh-huh. Well, you have a very interesting biography here. Thank you very much. There's so many activities and honors. How do you have time to do all these things and still have an A average? Well, I just have figured out a way. I think my father's helped me quite a bit in seeing that I'm able to get my homework done 
as soon as I get home from school, if I have cheerleading or whatever else I have right after that. Uh -huh. But I make sure that I get it done beforehand. So it's really a, a thing of scheduling. Yes, it certainly is. Mm. Linda, I see uh, you had a major disappointment at one time on your yeah. record here. You found a bonanza. Uh, what, <laughs> what was that? Well, we were on a cruise the other year, and um, I was strolling through one of these little uninhibited islands. Uninhibited? Thinking, oh, yes. They're little islands. <laughs> uninhabited. <here."> I mean, <laughs> uninhabited. <laughs> Meanwhile, there was plenty of activity and plenty to do everywhere you turned. Pictures, press interviews, practice for the dance numbers. This was the part of the contest in which appearance in sportswear, posture, and coordination were the factors that would count in the scoring. What category will you be judged in tonight? I'll be judged in the physical fitness category tonight. Is that when you'll be wearing your sportswear? Yes, Bobby Brooks has provided a light blue sports outfit for us to wear, and we'll be wearing those and doing it with our tennis racket, the little dance technique. Is that what this group is doing on the stage now? Yes, this is my group up on stage, and it looks like they're having more fun singing. <laughs> Mally, 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 some of the girls practicing for their individual talent exhibitions. Then there was a time for autographs. And a time for getting back the pictures taken earlier. They turned out pretty well. And even a time for trying on hoop skirts. But still, your great-grandmother wore them. And there was always time to relax with a Coke. The hard work paid off. After just two days' practice, the girls were ready for the first of the three preliminary evenings. I'm Diane Sawyer. I attend Seneca High School, Louisville, Kentucky. Hello, I'm Paula Crockett, and I'm a senior at Winterport High School in my hometown in Winterport, Maine. My name's Linda Beaupre. I attend Bellevue High School in Bellevue, Washington. Every girl here is trying to do her very best. This is the Poison Appearance Division, in which the judging is based on grace, grooming, carriage, and posture. Performance here counts 15% of the final score. I think if I were judging, I'd give them all perfect marks. Next are the individual talent acts that count 20% of the total score. Alaska's Terry O'Neill leads off with a Russian dance. A flute solo by North Dakota's Jane Fossum. Virginia's Barbara Lewis had a display of paintings. New Mexico's Donna Moran, a monologue. A ballet by Arkansas's Margot Dunaway. And Connecticut's Karen Cullen. Deborah, and Deborah, 
Fine baton and vocal act by Mississippi's junior miss, Cherry Scales, was judged the best presentation and won her the Performing Arts Prize for the evening. In addition to performing arts, there were also prizes for youth fitness, poison appearance, scholastic achievement, and mental alertness. These are the three sets of lucky winners. Now with a sports ballet to represent physical fitness, we're coming down to the wire. The final night. The night everyone here has been pointing toward for so long. The night that America's new junior miss will be named. The field has been narrowed down to eight finalists, and tonight one of them will be touched by magic. In spite of this gay number, suspense is in the air. Around the girls, running through the audience. Then the eight finalists repeated the presentations they had done on previous evenings. Ohio's Pam Robinson's well-received ballet. Pennsylvania's Kaczynski. As I have the accounts of the war, the dead, the injured. Look at the pictures of the ovens at Dachau, the huge open graves filled with thousands of bodies, not just men and soldiers, but helpless children, their arms outstretched, pleading for mercy, mothers clinging to their babies, begging not for their own. Arizona's Roxanne Hooper with an original number, Teen Day Dance. He's Diane Sawyer. On the old campground, give us a song to cheer. Our weary hearts, a song of home. And friends we love so dear. Five score years ago, they all encamped with just a valley or a river in between. Tis said that in the deathly stillness of the night you'd hear a call, Say, Johnny Reb, pee, 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 beating goober, pee, goodness, how delicious, eating goober, pee. And in retort, the Rebs would sing, Manasseh. Once the battle round the field was far and wide. The Yankees thought they'd whip us out, none to Richmond ride. But when they met our Dixie boys, their danger they espied. They wheeled about for Washington, didn't wait to ride. Oh, wait for the wagon, that old Yankee wagon. Wait for the wagon and we'll all take a ride. That government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching
for the last time, the girls assemble on the stage in the Parade of States. Win or lose, every one of these girls has had a wonderfully exciting, fun-filled week. I can promise you that not one of them would have missed the experience of being a part of the Junior Miss pageant for anything. The judges are a distinguished panel of men and women prominent in their professions. An author, a composer, an actress, an editor, and a director of the President's Youth Fitness Council. They have spent uncounted hours in a careful evaluation of each girl. Their minds are made up. The only thing remaining is to announce the verdict. Time has just about come for me to step aside for a new junior miss. But before I do, I'd like to make three wishes. To all those who have worked to make the pageant what it is today, that they receive some measure of the joy and happiness they've given to so many of the girls across the United States, as they have to me. To my family down there, that you stay just the same as you are. I love you. And to the 50 America's junior misses, waiting back there so anxiously that God may bless them as fully as he has me. This has been the most wonderful and rewarding year of my life. I know I'll look back upon it with fondness and the most wistful of memories. Thank you. The moment is here. Excitement and suspense are at a fever pitch as the first award is announced. That for personality. The most popular girl at the pageant, chosen by a vote of all the other girls, is charming Linda Beaupre of the state of Washington. Here's the first judge's decision, the fourth runner-up. Kay Shineski of Pennsylvania. runner-up. The girl from Dayton, Ohio, Pam Robinson. We're getting closer. The second runner-up, Roxanne Hooper of Springerville, Arizona. <laughs> Here comes the name of the first runner-up. Carol Cates, Rapid City, South Dakota. And now, the name we've all been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, the ideal high school senior girl in the nation, America's Junior Miss of 1963, Kentucky's Junior Miss. mother and father are. 
And there they are, champions all. Next day at Bellingraph Gardens, we got our last picture of the loveliest of the lovely. Pam Robinson, Carol Case, Roxanne Hooper, Kay Shineski, and Diane Sawyer, America's Junior Miss for 1963. I bet that film brought back a lot of memories to you, Diane. Oh, it certainly did. Just seeing all the girls once again made me recall the happy, funny things we did together. Well, Diane, I've done enough talking in this picture. Why don't I be quiet for a moment and let you have a word? Well, naturally, I'm a bit prejudiced. But for me, the Junior Miss Pageant was a thrilling and exciting adventure. Since that lucky night, I've been having a wonderful time. But seriously, if there's one thing I'd like to say today, it's this. I'm telling every girl I meet, if you're eligible, go out for the Junior Miss competition. If there's a pageant in your area, enter it. There are no strings attached to entering, and you'll never regret it. Besides the fun you've seen, there are a number of very valuable scholarships, $150,000 state and national. Jean and I both won $6,000 scholarships, and maybe our parents aren't blessing us. As Jean said, win or lose, it's an immensely rewarding experience. Mm -hmm.